Hi friends, um, it's currently Friday morning. Good morning. Good morning. I start work in 15 minutes. I'm currently eating a milkshake and banana bread. I finished um, Gemini last night, so I'm going to start Love, Simon at some point today at work if I can. Let's get started. The oh, little bike! So cute! It's a weirdly subtle conversation. I almost don't notice I'm being a black man. of a fake name? Well, I'd say the point of a fake name was to pick people like Mark and Anderson from knowing my secret identity, so I guess that worked out brilliantly. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would mean for us, but it was Lou and me. What a fucking dickhead. Yes. Sorry, you took a fucking screenshot. Poor guy, like, mm -hmm. I have only just met Simon, but I feel like if he had just talked to him nicely, he would have put in a good word anyway. But now he's just like, um, okay. you're actually gonna make you do this, make me do this, make you come on, it's not like that. Well, what's it like? Yeah, yes. it's not like that, but really it is, because if you don't, he's gonna, you're gonna tell everyone. I think we're just, I just think yes. we're in a position to help each other out. Yes. Like, yep. Date the options. So if they didn't want to set up an account, I guess they can, you know, because we accept cash, check, visa, and blue. Oh, so no. however the business really works, if they don't want to do that. Go Natalie. <laughs> um, or why people should just wear glasses and stop touching their eyeballs. And because your glasses make you look like Harry Potter. Right, Simon? One time. I said it once. <laughs> His friend sounds like such a dickhead. Hmm. Well, I think my unconscious is trying to tell me something. It can be pretty simple-minded when he's feeling intellectual. Obviously, the theme of the dream is vision. What am I not seeing? What are my blind spots? Your music collection. Here I was thinking this small book was not going to have many updates. And we're on page 10 and I've already had like six videos. I feel like Nick struggled with liking his friend. Oh, sorry. I feel like Simon struggled with liking his friend Nick. Because, um... Of course, I have a strict policy of, of not falling for straight guys. At least not confirmed straight guys. Anyway, I have a policy of not falling for Nick. Mm. I'm gonna find some more out about Blue now. I wanna know who it is. I'm already you can tell I'm gonna love this book. <laughs> so here's my proudest moment. I ran and hid like a freaking preschooler in the bathroom, like in the store with the doors closed so my legs wouldn't show. And then I never spoke to my girlfriend again. And it was Valentine's Day because I'm that classy. <laughs> Simon, it's bad. I'm really enjoying this book. Like I, I don't. I read Queens of Geek, which um, was LGBTQ, but I don't think I've ever read a book. Um, I don't read a lot of books with male main characters. I think, if I'm being honest. And yeah, I'm really intrigued to read more. LGBTQ books. Yeah, I want to read more diversely and I'm really enjoying this so far. And it just gives you a new perspective that you obviously as a straight person don't have, so I'm really liking it. I'm really excited to keep going. I'm only on chapter two. Yep, the dreaded okay, always accompanied by arch eyebrows and a mouth twisted into a condescending little butthole. <laughs> oh. Love it. He's talking about the quote that made him want to talk to Blue. Like the way you can memorize someone's gestures but never know their thoughts. And the feeling that people are like houses with vast rooms and tiny windows. The way you can feel so exposed anyway. The way he feels so hidden and so exposed about the fact that he's gay. And then he um, says, he talks about the ocean between people. And the whole point of everything is to find a shore worth swimming to. I mean, I just had to know him. His family sounds great. 
My parents are especially jolly tonight because it's Bachelorette night. I'm dead serious, as in the reality show. We all watched the show yesterday, but tonight's the night we Skype with Alice to discuss it. It's the new spy family tradition. I could not be more aware that this is a perfectly ridiculous. <laughs> so funny. Sounds like Nick's trying to get a girlfriend, says my mum. That's funny, mum, because get this, I'm actually trying to prevent Nick from getting the girl he likes, so Martin and Addison won't tell the whole school I'm gay. Did I mention I'm gay? I mean, how do people even begin with this stuff? Hmm. Okay, Daniel F's the hottest one, says Alice. Um, are you kidding me? My dad says the gay one. Daniel's not gay, nor objects. Kid, he's a one-man pride pro pride parade and eternal flame and the whole body tenses Leah once said that she'd rather have someone call her back directly than to have to sit there and listen to them talking shit about some other girl's weight I actually think I agree with that nothing is worth the, the secret humiliation of being insulted by proxy dad stop and so dad starts singing the for that song eternal flame mm -hmm. I never know if my dad says that kind of thing because he means it or if he's just trying to push Allison's buttons. I mean, if that's the way he feels, I guess it's good to know, even if I can't unknow it. Seriously, I'm not going to show anyone the emails, okay? Stop freaking out about it. But I'll take that with about a million grains, a million fucking grains of salt. Because he sure as hell doesn't say he was deleting them. All the years I've been in class with this kid, laughing along with everyone at the random shit he says. All the times I've seen him in play as we sat next to each other in choir for you, but I barely know him. I guess I don't know him at all. Never in my life have I underestimated someone so severely. <laughs> shit. Got some diversity in this book. I didn't realise Abby was a black, but he just said, um, and then it's another hour until Abby gets home. She and most of the other black kids spend more time commuting to school each day than I do in a week. Atlanta is so weirdly segregated and no one ever talks about it. I love that, that this in that's in this book too. She's not beating around the bush, she's just telling it how it is. And I didn't picture Abby. Yeah, 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 that's why I pictured her white, so I'm glad to know that she is black. And I'm glad that there's some diversity. I love it. I think it's really interesting how like my default is to just picture white people like I full pictured Abby with blonde hair I don't know I didn't really picture her face that much I just kind of picture her just like blonde girl and she's black which is really cool and I love that there's diversity in this book but I don't know why I ultimately just default to white it's like I like that they mentioned it in this book too. He mentions that he reads like Harry Potter and Draco fan fiction. And I realised, like, I was talking to Steph, um, who I do the Bad Witches read with, that I, um, I don't really notice when there's, like, I love when there's, um, characters of colour or um, gay characters in things but I don't notice when they're not there like I never really noticed that Harry Potter doesn't really have any uh, openly gay characters and um, Stranger Things doesn't have any openly gay characters you know I like when they're in shows but I don't notice when they're missing it's like this like if it was never mentioned that Abby was black I would never have thought she was black do you know what I mean it's really interesting how we're just conditioned to think that way I don't know I just think it's really interesting but I'm really excited that it's quite diverse and that it even mentioned Harriet Draco fan fiction yes Abby turns to her to look at me didn't know you were friends with Marnie she says which is just about the most hilarious fucking statement ever <laughs> Actually, I was a bit of a one-trick pony myself when I was little. I was always a superhero. I guess I like to imagine myself as having this complicated secret identity. Maybe I still do. Maybe that's the point of the whole point of these emails. Mm. That's blue. So it's probably just. So it's going to be mostly soccer like people. Probably. I don't know. I mean, I did get a text from Monkeys. I was not confirming he'd be there, but I don't feel like bringing him into the conversation. This is fantastic. This is me. I'll tell this woman here. Simon, ooh, it's a Dementor robe over my clothes. I think you'll survive. What's a Dementor? I mean, I can't even. Nora, you are no longer my sister. So it's some Harry Potter thing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Who are these people and why does no one know what a freaking Dementor is? Honestly. A Dementor. What in God's holy name is that? A Dementor from Harry Potter? We'll put your hood back for the love of Jesus. <laughs> 
seriously, who are you? I'm on page 47. How much, Simon, how much did you drink? I, I asked Leah, I'm twisting the ends of her hair. Leah's hair is so pretty. <laughs> it's so funny, even the narrations, he's drunk. One beer. One a most excellent, most delicious beer. One beer. I can't even begin to express how ridiculous you are. And they're talking about where they're from, and then everyone's like, how did we end up here? And Abby's like, slavery in my case. And fucking fuck, I need to shut up. I need to shut up about five minutes ago. And then he's talking about, I like this line, he's talking about how he's different to his friends and how like, you know, Gary and Abby and Nick and every musician ever, people who go to parties and drink and don't get wasted off one beer, people who have had sex and don't think it's a big deal. On the other side of the line are people like Leah and me. I'm on that side of the line too, baby. This is great. Um, so he's saying how like Abby's gone to dance with Nick and Martin and um, so Abby, except Abby kind of goes into her old wo own world when she dances so Nick and Martin end up bobbing self-consciously self -consciously and pointedly not looking at each other. Oh my god, it's happening. We're finally witnessing something more painful than Nick's bar mitzvah. Or could this achievement a lot? Should we be filming this? Just savour it. <laughs> <sighs> It feels like we're the last survivors of a zombie apocalypse, a Wonder Woman, and a gay Dementor. It doesn't bode well for the survival of the species. <laughs> you could ask Leah. I feel a storm of laughter brewing. brewing. You think I like Leah? I don't know. You look so sweet together tonight. I'm hoping that Leah doesn't end up liking him. I know he likes, she likes his friend, but like... Me and Leah, I asked, but I'm gay. Gay, gay. God, I should really just tell her. I can kind of picture her reaction, eyes loudening, mouth falling over. Yeah, maybe not so much. This book is over. That's the thing people wouldn't understand. This coming out thing, it's not even about being me being gay, because I know deep down my, my family would be fine with it. And it goes on about how his friends would also be fine with it, and they all disown him. But I'm tired of coming out. All I ever do is come out. I try not to change, but I keep changing in all these tiny ways. I get a girlfriend, I have a beer, and every freaking time I have to reintroduce myself to the universe all over again. Mm, so true. I've never noticed the subject of the um, emails before, and now I'm going to pay attention. This one is hollow wieners. <laughs> Are you doing anything interesting this weekend? We're so, supposed to have suck a nice weather. Oh Excuse God, me, dick nice weather. The exact same and then subject Reese is a better than saying. I'm definitely paying attention from now on. Very funny, Blue. Very funny. Admittedly, I wouldn't know, but I have to hope you're wrong about that. Maybe you should stop having heterosexual sex jackets. Just saying. And then, um, I don't think it has anything to do with, with other people thinking they know me. It's more that I want to leap in and say certain things and do certain things but I always seem to hold myself back I think a big part of me is afraid I definitely relate to that and he's like what are you wearing for I wish they would just tell each other who they are then we better find out who, who he is by the end so cute a non heterosex though I can imagine it may be a little better than racist is it weird that I can't talk about this without blushing oh it's funny how it ends up being the straightest, preppiest, most athletic guys who all go yeah, who go all out for gender bender. I guess they feel secure enough in their masculinity that they don't care. I actually hate when people say that. I mean, I feel secure in my masculinity too. Being secure in your masculinity isn't the same as being straight. I'm reading page 69 and he's saying he'll go to the um, football game because he wants to sit in the same bleach as a blue, which is really cute. And he says, seriously, Leah says, I feel her eyes on me though, I make a point to look straight ahead. It's too brute, which makes me think of Taylor Swift. Jesus. I really like how she writes. I really want to read the upside of Unrequited now. I hope that's really good too. Um, it's just very real. Like I feel like I've had these similar thoughts where he's like, um, I can't believe Nick and I ended up in the middle of this. It's so Johnny High School. I feel like I'm supposed to make some comment to underscore the ridiculousness of it all, but honestly, it's sort of nice not to have to be cynical for a change. I guess it feels, I guess it feels like I'm part of something. Hey, can I join you guys? Definitely. He scoots over a few feet. Plenty of room, and there is. I won't have to sit on his lap anyway. It actually, it's actually kind of unfortunate. Mm. 
and I seriously can't even because Cal's back is Cal's eyes at the fact that he apparently notices me enough to notice I'm not a football game. This is my first time I say it because I just have to say the most virgin thing ever. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that you're a bit of a sweet tooth bloom. I can't imagine why you think that. Alright, I have a sneaking suspicion that you're not 100% committed to your Oreo diet. Below you salty little minx. I have to admit, I like to imagine you as a kid fantasizing about junk food. I also like to imagine you now fantasizing about So inappropriate to be reading out that at work. I can't believe I just wrote that. I can't believe I'm hitting send. You dog. You dog blue. And then Simon's just like freaking out because I can't believe he wrote that. You cuties. I'm glad him and Leah made up. It's very sweet having him all excited for his birthday. And then who taps tapes on my bow tie and pokes my cheeks, which is something she does weirdly often because apparently my cheeks are adorable. <laughs> Whatever the heck that means. Simon is such a sweetheart. He's like, um, yeah, I guess so. I say finally, I think we're having an ice cream cake Oreo. I am. I just have to put the Oreo thing out there. That's cool, he says. Hope you save room for it. No discernible reaction to Oreos, but I guess that doesn't have to mean anything. Okay, well, enjoy it. But then he puts his hand on my shoulder, and for the briefest fraction of a second, I almost don't believe it happened. I mean, I'm dead serious. Birthdays are fucking amazing. <laughs> Okay, Simon, it's your birthday. He's like, I guess we would have to use some kind of robotic megaphone to warp them so we, so they sound like Darth Vader. Or we could just do other things instead of talking. I mean, just say, you go, you go, Simon. Sorry for this terrible angle. <laughs> oh, remember his bar mitzvah? Oh God, I say. Really, Simon, we can clear a spot on the floor right now if you want. Simon's beard dance break. Yep, okay. Nick's mistake was inviting my whole family to his bar mitzvah. Mine was attempting to pop and lock to boom boom pow in front of them. <laughs> Freaking up, he's so annoying. Why do my things awkward and stop picking your fucking elbow? But I like this. So here's the thing. Simon means the one who hears and Spear means the one who watches, which means I was basically destined to be nosy. Oh, Max. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Fucking Martin making him have a bad day and then it got worse because Cal and someone's ankles overlapped and he almost could have got arrested on the way home and then he saw that Leah and Nick were hanging out together maybe they could get together and maybe that's what it was but he's like you shouldn't bother me when Nick and Leah hang out without me I just feel like I'm on the outside somehow not all the time just sometimes but yeah I feel irrelevant and I hate that Updates, I'm on page 107, all done at work today because I've been on the phone, it's just okay because I get to read. Um, I really like Bloom. He obviously wants to meet Simon, but he's scared, which is fair enough. Um, and he's thinking about coming out, that's really exciting. Maybe because he wants to meet Simon, or maybe he just wants to, as he said, what does he say? Get it over with. I'm glad that you found me distracting. It wouldn't be fair otherwise. Hey, cutie. I'm a little hung up on Blue's parents being religious. I feel like a moron, honestly, because I'm basically the most blasphemous person in the world. Like, I don't even know how to you to not use the Lord's name in vain. But maybe it's no big deal to him. Him being Blue, not the Lord. I feel young. And then. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Martin climbing over someone's chin and join us every time, I swear to God. <laughs> fucking Martin, I hate him and I keep reading his name is Martian, but he is a little fucking Martian. Dickhead Martian. Mm -hmm. Makes me sad. Um, blood rushes to my face and I feel that familiar fucking prickle behind my eyes. Fucking bastard. But he returns away quickly, looking miserable. Seriously, that arsehole deserves to feel miserable. Yeah, he does. Well, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk about your sexual orientation now like it's my business, Simon. I'm just going to tell the whole damn school to school right here, right now, because I'm an arsehole and that's just how it's going to go down. I'm letting Martin Addison blackmail me. I don't, 
Jesus, what do you say? Just when you think your parents gonna be more clueless. These two are so cute, I can't handle it. Do you really think I'm cure medical? Because Mrs. Y says I have a thing about sentence fragments. In real life, I go totally silent around cute guys, I just freeze up. I can't help it. But another reason you were asking is because you wanted to hear me call you cute again. It's my little. You're cute. And yeah, I guess you do have a thing about sentence fragments, but I sort of love it. Oh shit! Scared the shit out of me. Say hi. <laughs> Jealous Simon. <laughs> so, who are all these cute guys who make you nervous? They can't be that cute. You better not love their sentence fragments. <laughs> Simon. Mm -hmm. It's weird because Blue's emails used to be this extra thing that was separate from my actual life, but now I think maybe these emails are my life. Everything else sort of feels like I'm sliding through a train. I don't want Martin and Simon to be friends. I'm sure they will be, because like Simon, I can't do no liking, but also if you remember that he's blackmailing him, then no. No, I thought it was alright when he didn't mention it after a while. He could have just let it go, but no, he's freaking being rude in front of all his friends. We're listening to the birthday mix Leah made me, which includes three Riley Rillo Carly songs from their first two albums. Leah. Hold that thought. I had a call. What do these customers think I'm here to do work? Yeah, the listening to the mix includes three Rallo Kylie songs from their first two albums. Leah has a girl crush on Jenny Lewis. You can't not have a crush on Jenny Lewis. I'm 20 years younger than her and unquestionably gay. But yeah, I can make out though. Erin! Not my type either, I say in Abby Lobs. I feel this stuck in my chest. Oh. Who is coming out to his mum tonight? She has a little wine. <sighs> Abby, can I tell you something? Sure, what's up? You can't tell anyone I say it, and no one else knows this. She doesn't speak, but I perceive her angling her body towards me. I didn't plan to do this tonight. Oh my god. So the thing is, okay. It's the first time I saw this one tonight. This is the first time you've told anyone I know it well. Simon, I'm really honored. And I give it back to her and she raises her fingers through mine. Are you surprised? No, she looks at me directly. Yes. You mean? No, not at all. But you're not surprised. Do you want me to be surprised? I don't know. She squeezes my hand. Oh, Abby. You sweetheart. So cute. I don't know. Are you going to tell people? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, yeah, eventually. Okay, well, I love you, she says. She pokes me in the cheek and then we go home. Oh my god. I'm gonna stop reading now because I'm about to finish work and I feel like it's about to get very real. So, I'm staying with my auntie over the weekend, so I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to read, but I made a very good dent. I'm close to. I'm just under halfway through, so I'll definitely finish this on Sunday. It looks so goddamn good. Loving it. Say bye, Erin. Bye. Bye. Hey, friends. I'm at my auntie's. Oh, they're pretty cute. Look at it. It's so cute. Poor thing. It's almost as old as me. Okay, nice. Adult beverage for the weekend. I got some nibblies. It's got some movie on, I don't know what it is. My army is cooking away. Just for like a few minutes, I probably won't get much reading done while I'm here, but I will get some done when I get home so I can be festive. I didn't get any reading apart from Friday Done for Love, Simon. I'm on chapter 16, page 127. Hopefully I can finish today. 
Um, you may notice that I wear the same clothes to work all the time. <laughs> like I wear the same pajamas all the time. They both came out to the one last night. It's so sweet how Abby um, reacted, obviously. And his mum was like, um, she was pretty calm about the whole thing. She didn't bring pieces into it at all. Um, she's just mostly concerned that I understand the importance of practicing sex. No, I'm not kidding. She didn't seem to believe me when they told her I'm not sexually active. So I guess that's flattering. And they both came out because I think they want to be with each other and that's so sweet. Even though they were scared, they knew in their long term it would be like the best for them because they would be happier with each other, I guess. So between Miss, every time I put in your and Miss Alice read about freaking Casanova, your parents seriously impressed with your sex life. Someone who has a little bit of a problem with fragmented sentences and accidental self disclosures, yep. <laughs> Mm. I wasn't planning to and it was awkward and weird and really kind of nice. I feel mostly relieved and a little embarrassed because I feel like I made it into a bigger deal than it needed to be. A part of me feels like I jumped over some kind of border and now I'm on the other side of realising I can't cross back. Mm. I think you're giving me way too much credit. You're the hero tonight, Blue. You brought your own wall down, maybe mine too. Kids. This is really momentous, isn't it? I'm guessing this is the kind of thing we remember for the rest of our lives. It's easier than I thought it would be, but at the same time, it's so much harder. <laughs> and don't worry, I only really ever think about sex with people who hide from their eighth grade girlfriends in bathrooms on Valentine's Day and eat a ton of warriors and listen to really depressing and wonderful music but never wear band t shirts. I guess I have a very specific type, I'm not kidding. Oh, this one's killing me. I have to meet him. I don't care if it ruins everything. I'm just close to waking up with my laptop. Oh. That's not like having a crush on some random musician or actor or Harry freaking Potter. This is the real deal. It has to be. It's almost a libertating. This one's killing me. Even though it feels like I've known Abby forever, I only met her four months ago. She hasn't had time to have any set ideas about me. But I've known Leah and Nick since sixth grade and since we were four. And it's thing. It's almost insurmountable. I don't know how to tell them something like this. I still come out feeling like Simon. Because if Leah and Nick don't recognise me, I don't even recognise myself anymore. Yeah. Try not to think about something is like playing freaking whack a ball. Every time you push one foot down, another one nudges its way to the surface. <sighs> he's talking about how he keeps losing out with his friends. And he's like, um, Blue, who is so guarded yet, yet so surprisingly flirtatious sometimes, who thinks about sex and thinks about it with me. But you know, double helixes, twisty loopy double helixes. I'm still very conflicted with Martin. He's like lovable, but then he's also blackmailing Simon, so it's like, you know, you're protective of Simon, but then you also think he's kind of funny and nice, but also not nice. It's just very conflicting. <laughs> Simon, nice Labradors. I mean, he's cute, so I'll let it slide, but the dogs in my pajamas are clearly golden retrievers. <laughs> Is it blue? Blue. Oh my god. Who is it? I just wanna know. So decided Abby's my favourite character apart from Simon and Blue. She's so sweet. I look up and realise that Abby is watching me with great interest. I flash her the stink eye and she looks late, but she has this tiny annoying smile that just kills me. Abby is sweetheart. I love this. There's probably an hour before we're supposed to reconvene in the auditorium and we're probably supposed to run through everything again, but I mean really. It's Saturday, we're in a dark, empty school and we're a bunch of theatre kids wearing pyjamas and jacked up on donuts. We end up seeing Disney songs in the stairwell. So it's super fun. Yeah, Abby's definitely my fave. I feel like I'm very similar to her. Like not in every single way, but just her personality. She's huggy, she's very like happy and poppy. And, um, yeah, but I don't think Cal is blue. I think it's just too good to be true that rhymes. But yeah, I think it can't be him. If it is, that's awesome. But I just think 
it, it's not gonna be him. That's my guess. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Just had to read this really cute section. It was like a cow gets jealous. So maybe it is blue. I don't know. My cow just likes him. Okay, all right. Um, and it said he said she's in just remind me. Are there any? If I give you the invoice numbers, are you able to have a hint of the rest of the information? I'm like yes. that. I'm a very touchy person. Even with my friends. Yeah. Okay. So Abby's a happy person, and I'm sort of nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I see sort of end too. So that's been nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Simon Spy Spears over open invitation to um, with this missive with this missive I don't even know how to say that I hear my different names so again again and instead of finding my content me directly to discuss for interest anal front sex or blue jobs the joking good words ladies need not apply I've already reported it Joe or John, someone who doesn't know the name of Bud Sex is redundant. I guess I should be grateful he didn't press one of his freaking screenshots, but honest to god, that slap in reference to Blue makes him the most, the biggest, most cavernous gaping arsehole who ever lived. I mean, it's true. I say finally, I don't look at it. We both throw the ceiling. I am gay. I figured, really? From your reaction, I don't know. So, what are you gonna do about it? Are you going to tell people? I think now, I think Leah already read it. You could deny it. Okay, I'm not going to deny it. I'm not ashamed of it. Alright, well, I didn't know. You haven't said anything up until now. I have, um, mm, Abby, are you okay? Come when you can. Oh, she's worried that he's gonna think she told someone. I would never tell anyone I love you. Abby! Oh, in good fucking tidings to you too, Mum. He was after it for exclusive Oh, he's gonna tell his people. Oh my god. Oh, Simon. If she thinks coffee, drinking coffee is big news, it's going to be a quite a fucking morning. Oh. I'm so nervous for him. It's clearly my moment. So if this moment really belonged to me, it wouldn't be happening. Not now, I mean. Not yet. How oh, blue did this? Two words, two freaking words, and I'm not the same Simon anymore. I did not know why. I thought this would be easy. I know what this is, says my dad. Let me guess. You're gay. You got someone pregnant. You're pregnant. Dad, stop it. I'm pregnant. I thought so kid, says my dad. You're glowing. I look him in the eye. Really, though. I'm gay. Everyone is quiet for a moment, and then my mom says, Honey, that's. God, that's. Thank you for telling us. Mm, Simon knows we love him. Mm, I mean, I guess what it's what, about what I expected. My mum asking about my feelings, dad turning it into a joke, us getting political and more keeping her mouth shut. You could say there's a kind of comfort and predictability in my family is pretty goddamn predictable. <laughs> Depression, I might have. No way, talk to me. It's exciting, we can talk about guys. Okay, SA pushing off the bed and maneuvering into a sitting position. Tell me about your boyfriend. Whoa, there. What? I look at her. The phone calls disappearing into your eyes. Come on. I thought we were discussing your life life. So I get to make a scene and come up and have everyone awkwardly debate the whole thing one in front of me on freaking business, and you won't even tell me you have a boyfriend. How do you know I don't have a girlfriend? Oh, Is it a girlfriend? No. I'm calling from a friend. Hot water just about oh, your hot water so system. sweet. Your sister's so sweet. Oh, God. You should have the guts to come in Australia if you crack this mouth. Something like that. You're a funny bum. I'm trying. Oh, God. It's all happening. I spent, I spent a little too much time thinking how global you are and he wasn't trying to translate that into a viable mental image for daydreams and the like. Oh, I don't know. Really, though, you don't have to worry about me going out of internet's event or is abundant. Daydreams and the like. Specifically, and the like. Please elaborate. And I think I should have Fucking Martin, you little dude. Yeah. Your brother was at the restaurant. You creeper. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know why he just doesn't tell his sister. Maybe he doesn't want to out the other guy. I don't yeah. know. Oh, they're having a New Year's party. <laughs> His parents don't want him to sleep over anymore with Nick. Oh my god, Mum, I'm not talking about this right now. Jesus Christ, as if Nick and I can't be in a room together without it turning into frenzied wild scenes. Nick's singing voice has this supernatural effect on the freshman girl. Did you just tell us you're gay? Yes, okay. What? That's all you're going to say? Okay? You said not to make a big deal out of it. What am I supposed to say? So it's like supportive, I don't know. Or awkwardly, awkwardly hold his hand like I did. Anything. I'm not holding your hand, I tell him.
All right. But know that I've got. Oh, well, that's better. Oh, I told you. Oh. Mm, Leia, don't have the right to be mad. What are you talking about? This is your thing. But you're entitled to your emotions. Mm. There's one thing I've learned from having a psychologist from mother. This isn't about me, though. Don't be mad. Did you think I would have some kind of shitty reaction and all that? I wouldn't be okay with it. Of course not, God, Leah, no. Not at all. You're like the most... Yeah? He's like, oh god. He's like, of course not. You're the one who introduced me to Harry. Harry and Joker. Yeah, that wasn't even a concern. So who else did you tell? I mean, Nora's at the top, so I, then I had to. Right, but I mean, who else other than Abby? No one. But then I close my eyes and think about it. And how did it end up on Tom? Oh, right. Long story. I think I'm about to fall asleep. Then. But I'm not, and I don't, not for hours and hours. Oh, so I obviously tells her what happened. Premium. Um, okay, that was a freaking catfish. I'm going to scream. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to scream. That's the only reason I can think as to why he wouldn't want to meet up. But he wants him to meet in person, but he can't think of a way for that to happen without everything changing and him losing him. Doesn't that does that make sense? Don't hate me. Mm. And yes, that would change things, but I'm kind of ready for them to change. So maybe this big this is a big deal. I don't know. I want you to know your, your friends' names and what you do after school. And all the other things you haven't been telling me. I want to know what your voice sounds like. Not until you're ready though. I could never hate you. You're not going to lose me, just think about it. He's being fucking catfish, so help me go. No one's edged the word fag into my life yet, which is even better. I'm almost ready to believe that things have gotten a little better at Craigwood. Yeah. But no one saw Martin's Tumblr post after all. I don't even want to think about seeing his stupid evil face. And of course he's in my first fucking period. The first thing would have been covered under the 12 month warranty. I'm just trying to breathe. Someone says my grandma wants a turn and everyone starts laughing. I mean, I don't even know these people. I don't know why I'm God's saying this is so funny to them. Fucking bastards. Martin won't look at me. Yeah, well, good. Eat shit, Martin. Mm, Leah and Abby are good friends. One girl who even confirms that Jesus still loves me. Jesus. If you were to have a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, What the hell is wrong with people? Mm -hmm. Fucking kids with that sign. Like, I don't even care about Martin. He should feel like a fucking miserable human being because he is. Yeah. But like, oh my god. So I'm probably lucky I'm not his friend because I have rage when it comes to shit like this. Like I would punch someone in the face. Why are people so fucking cruel? Um, Catch up with Martin, he looks like he's being crumbled. Yeah, good. Fucking eat shit. I also love how he's like, I'm sick of straight people who can't get their shit together. <laughs> if you like it, just ask around. So true. I'm gonna cry. This tape is so nice. You okay, Simon? I feel myself flush a little bit. I'm fine. Okay, well, just know that those assholes are getting suspended. I'm not even kidding. I will make it my heel to die on. <sighs> Go, Bram and Garrett. You guys are fast and you don't fucking care because you should fucking care. What happens if you really screw up the audition? I ask. Audition? Ask Bram. Smile like so quietly when he looks at me. I feel this happy sort of a try as I blush and I smile back at him. He shouldn't feel guilty. I'm like, he's tried multiple times to meet up with Blue. And the Blue's own fault if he doesn't. He's not going to wait for him forever. I love it. He's like saying how like, he likes the view of all the soccer players. I would enjoy that view too, my friend. Where have you been, um, Martin? Do you really have the right to have an attitude right now? Fucking hell. Is he in the corner? Yeah, you do owe me an apology, which means nothing now because you're. The first thing I want to say is I had a lot of. I try not to have high expectations going into this book, 
but it certainly has not disappointed. It has it had all the hype and it lived up to the hype and I'm not even finished yet and I think it's gonna go on my favourite shelf. Just saying. All page just makes me so sad. Like it's like yeah, who would have guessed because Shady Creek is just so progressive. And then he's like Okay, how about this? I think you're an arsehole. I think you're a huge fucking arsehole. I don't, I mean, I don't even pretend that you didn't know this would happen. You blacked about me. This was, I mean, wasn't this the whole goddamn point humiliating me? And you know what? You don't get to say it's not a big thing. This is a big fucking thing. This was supposed to be, this was supposed to be mine. I'm supposed to decide when and where and who knows and how I want to say it. And suddenly my throat gets like So yeah, you know, you took that from me and you brought Blue into it. Seriously, you fucking suck, man. I don't, I, I mean, I don't even want to look at you. So can you just step the fuck away from my car and leave me the fuck alone? Yeah, and then he starts crying. You fucking bastard, Martin, I hate you. I hate you. I can't even with Martin. He's like, I seriously didn't think it would be such a big thing. And he's like crying. I'm like, you know what? Good. You're a fucking idiot. How dare you? Fucking idiot. Don't you dare cry. You don't have the right to cry. Yeah, you feel bad? You should feel bad, you little motherfucker. Have you tried eating your feelings? I hear over it can be therapeutic. Mm. Exactly. You shouldn't feel guilty for getting angry, especially if I'm mad about what's making you angry. But like us, we shouldn't feel angry for reacting to it. Poor Simon. Blue knows who he is, which I don't think he's so worried about. <sighs> but... He's not who he thinks he is, which I knew it. I knew it wasn't Cal. Cal is his own type of... Cal is his own little person who we don't know about, really. You know, he obviously does like Simon as a friend, if anything else. But... So Simon... Blue knows who Simon is, but Simon has no idea who Blue is. I love this, though. I love that his thing is Simon says... And it's obviously not as clever as I thought it was. But I really fucked up with Cal and being honest to freaking God, I'm a moron. Typical Simon um, logic. Mm. I totally know how he feels about this because I was like this in um, high school. Thinking it could be a message from him, meet me by your locker, I'm ready. But it's not. It's not because Blue's fucking shit. Fucking shit. <sighs> this part's so sad. So when the school day ends and nothing extraordinary has happened, it's a tiny heartbreak. It's like 11 o'clock on the night of your birthday when you realise no one's throwing a surprise party for you after all. But the thing is, he's not blue. Blue, he's barely been returning my emails. Frickin' blue, I'm gonna smack your ass. <laughs> Why can't you just tell him who you are? This is making me so sad. So excited. On the Thursday after rehearsal, Cal very casually mentioned that he's bisexual and that maybe we should hang out sometimes. Oh, catches me off guard and all I can do is sort of gave a hit, but I love how his friends like, who pray tell is this Calvin fellow? <sighs> they just like really support him. Shut up. I'm sorry, Simon. I'm just so excited for you. Was it a secret, right? I don't know how to explain that for all intents and purposes I'm already taken by someone who evidently shares a first name with the president and an obscure cartoon character and doesn't like to draw and doesn't have blue eyes and has not yet pushed me in a rolling chair. Someone who seemed to like me better before he knew who I was. I think I said it before but if he's getting fucking catfished I'm going to lose my shit. Just makes me sad because he's not replying. He's like can't we just pretend that this ever happened and go back to normal? Cause he's like, you're, he's like, you're my best friend and I really want to keep you. I'm trying to figure out what happens, like, but it's pointless because even if I crack the code somehow, it doesn't change the fact that Blue isn't interested. He found out who I am and now it's broken and I don't know what to do. I told him I understand if he's not attracted to me. I tried to make it sound like I don't mind, but I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand and I totally mind. This fucking sucks, actually. Simon. Killing me, man. Killing my heart. I like that Blue gave him a shirt, but it's like too little, too fucking late. It's really sweet. But like, no. No, you're not allowed. He's just thinking he's gonna be fine now. I would totally be the same. I'd be like, I wanna put on now, but then I'd be like, oh, it's like putting on like a. Yep, this is me, this is who I am. Come and talk to me, but he probably still wouldn't because he's a fucking coward. Really? 
It's nothing, it's not even a moment, but it's a burst of anger in my chest. I can actually feel it. And all because of Blue is a goddamn coward. He'll hang a fucking t shirt on the door of my locker, but he doesn't have the guts to approach me in person. He ruined everything. And now there's this adorable guy with some awesome bangs who maybe even minds me. He's completely pointless. I'm not going ever going to hang out with Cal. I'm too busy trying to love someone. I'm trying not to be in love with someone who isn't real. You're killing me, mate. You're killing me, Simon. Like, you really just kill the father's heart. You're killing me. Anyway, that's all. That is all. There's this squish squish feeling. I'm like I'm being drawn on because I'm not even kidding. Eyeliner actually comes in a freaking pencil. Am I done? Basically, but then she attacks me like a ninja with powder and brushes. Whoa! Says Brandon passing through. I know, Simon. Don't take this the wrong way. These are kind of ridiculously hot, which leaves me almost getting whiplash from turning my head towards the mirror so fast. <laughs> what do you think? I look weird. I'm barely defeating my face without glasses and with eyeliner. The overall impression is eyes. Wait till Cal sees. Ivy says under her breath. I shake my head. He's not. But I can't finish the thought. I can't stop looking at myself. Go, Simon. Go. Yes, why? <laughs> Leah is obsessed with the eye makeup. Holy fuck, Simon. Don't you love it? <laughs> Says Amy. I feel this tug of self consciousness. It doesn't help that cute Bram is looking at me. <laughs> I had no idea your eyes were so grey. Did you know? I did not. Like they're kind of charcoal around the edges. Mm -hmm. But dark silver. 50 shades of grey. Mm. Bloody blue. Simon's so nice and you're a shit person. Shit. This is the one thing, the one I'm excited about because it's my own class because we will be out there somewhere and as pissed as I am at him, I still like the idea of him being in the audience. Screw you. People are pieces of shit. People are pieces of shit. <laughs> so something's happened to the names of both your characters to something. They've changed the name of both your characters to something inappropriate. To what? But I know immediately Martin plays Fagin and I'm listed as Fagin's boy. I guess some genius thought it would be hilarious to cross out a couple of I's and N's. But if the show goes on, because Simon is a brave person and he doesn't just fucking let bullies win. I wish it didn't matter. Oh. Martin buries his face in his hands. I'm so, so sorry, Spear. Just stop it. I stand up, okay? Fucking stop. I guess I'm getting a little tired of this. I'm trying not to let it touch me. I shouldn't care if stupid, stupid people call me a stupid word and I shouldn't care what people think of me. But I always care. I used to tell Glenn when he was here. I'm like, she's been. This is in the middle of winter. Oh, wow. Then the teacher gets up and tells everyone off, which no one even cares about because they're all shit little children. When she says something about zero tolerance, Abby squeezes my hand. I feel so totally blank right now. Let's do this. There's this scary, intense look in her eyes. I kind of want to go home and crawl into bed with my iPod, but the curtains start to open and I keep moving forward. Go soon. No way. But later in the dressing room, it hits me. Martin Van Buren, our eighth fucking president. No way. There is no way. It's not possible. What do I know about Martin? What do I know about Blue? Oh my god, it's totally not him. It is not him. It would mean that Martin wrote the post on the Tumblr back in August about being gay and that Martin's the one who'd been emailing every day for five months. I, I can almost believe it, but then, but I can't explain the black mouth. If Martin's actually gay, why bring Abby into it at all? <laughs> he said that I never got the vibe he likes me, not even Martin, so it can't be Martin. Martin can't be blue, unless, but no, because it can't be a joke. Blue can't be a joke, it's not even a possibility. No one could be that mean, not even Martin. I'm having trouble catching my breath. I can't be a joke because I don't know what it 
oh, what I, I would do if it were a joke. I can't think one. about it. God, I'm sorry, but I can't. I won't. That's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but well, I get nauseous from just reading my phone in the car, so it's Nick. Nauseated, I say, and my heart twists. <laughs> Which is right next to Aurora's coffee, but I'm not thinking of like blue. I'm not thinking about Aurora coffee and I'm not thinking about blue. And I can't think about blue. I really can't think about blue being <laughs> Oh my god, his friends are so sweet. I love them. They are the best. Especially Nick and Abby. I mean, Leah's great too, but she's not here. All his friends are great, but right now, she's like, here we are. When we arrive at the place on Juniper's called Webster's, there's a big patio strung with Christmas lights and rainbow banners, and even though the patio is empty, the parking lot is overflowing. Is this like a gay bar? Abby and Nick both grin. Okay, I see. But how are we getting in? I'm 5'7. Nick can't grow a face with her, and Abby's wearing a wrist full of friendship bracelets. There's no freaking way we pass for 21. It's a restaurant, says Abby. We're getting dinner. Oh, guys wearing scarves and jackets and skinny jeans and they're all cute and they're all overwhelming I mean you're a cute okay, perfect. Well, I'll keep it just the three of you are so hard resting his hand on my shoulder for barely a second but it's enough to make my stomach flutter it should be just a minute hard not right now I love that Simon loves Harry Potter he's got blonde hair much lighter than mine Draco blonde what's your name Alex? Simon, simple Simon, made a pie man. He's so really drunk. I'm Peter, and I think Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Simon, he's got a martini. You have amazing eyes. Are you a student? Oh, yes. He's killing me, he's killing me. Emery, a junior with a freaking martini. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm suspecting random thought he was in college, which I also got confused with too because I thought he was a junior in high school as well. Baby 17. Oh. And then, um, like, I love it. He, I can see that. Wait, did you see his teeth? He had like the whitest teeth I've ever seen. The white strip. She's got her arms around my waist and Nick's his arm around my waist. I mean, my same waist. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I can't understand. Does he actually want to sit with it under his pillow? I'm so confused as to why he wants his pillow. And then she goes, Abby, he goes, Abby, did I mention you as the absolute best person in the entire universe? Oh my god, I love you so much. I love you more than Nick loves you. Abby laughs and Nick starts coughing. Because I can't remember if it's a secret that Nick loves Abby. I should probably keep talking. Abby, what if you became my sister? I mean, you sisters. They're terrible. Oh. And there was never, never home anymore, and Alice has a boyfriend. How is that terrible? Alice has a boyfriend. They're supposed to be Alice and Nora, they're not supposed to be different. They're not allowed to change. But you're changing, you're different than you were five months ago. I'm not different, Simon. I just want you to pick up a random guy in a gay bar, you're wearing eyeliner, and you're completely wasted. I'm not wasted. Abby and Nick look at each other again in the room, being a start laughing. And he wasn't some random guy. He wasn't, he was a random college guy. Yes, Simon. <laughs> Simon. So you're saying the problem is I'm not trying to hide it. The problem is I'm not lying to you. He's a man. Do you like it better when I lie about things? It probably sucks for you now that you can't make fun of gay people anymore. I bet mum won't let you write. Simon. That awkward moment when you realise you've been making gay jokes in front of your gay kid for the last 17 years. Going to talk consequences. Uh oh. Because things are shitty enough. People think I'm a joke, and there's a boy I can't stop being in love with, and he might just be someone I can't stand, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to puke. Sometimes it does get like I'm weird. On different days, I'm just everyone else is like boiling hot. Yeah. And then other days, I'm excited. And I'll take your phone right now, says my mum. That's so effed up, I say, because that's what you'll like, say, but I mean, honestly, I don't even fucking care. And I'll be like, can we turn the fan on, please? He's like, are you hot? Um, I'm the one who got drunk and paraded in front of my parents. Not your best move. Something's different, and I can't quite put it down. Then I realize it's the hands. They're holding hands. And my head snaps up to look at them. They both smile self consciously. Well, well, well. I guess you didn't miss me too much Friday night after all. <laughs> Not really, says Nick. Oh, cute.
um, cool out. I feel bad. But like, that cool out, which is just talk about things, labor. you know? Like, for, um, you I mean, if this is about Nick and Nevi, so I don't know what to tell you, right? This is all about Nick and Nevi. I mean, shit, I'm shaking hands, whatever. Or what? Do you actually want to talk about it? Or do you just want to be really sarcastic and not tell me what's going on? Because if you're going to laugh at me seriously, you're going to have to wait in line. Oh, poor Simon. Okay, but you know what? Forget it. I'm going to my fucking dress rehearsal now and you can find me whenever you're ready to not be an arsehole. Awesome. Have fun. Say hi to your BFF for me. Leah, please stop. They knew it was going to be bad. I should just fucking him out again. I need to get his shit together. Oh, I'm glad he's talked to his parents. But I can what his mom saying. That's really sweet. Um... You know, apparently, yeah, so you can't understand. You have this baby and eventually he starts doing stuff. And I used to be able to see every tiny change and it was so fascinating. And now I'm missing stuff, the little things, and it's hard to let go of that. He mm. latched right onto my mom. Oh, it was the most incredible moment. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't turn out to be much of a boy. My dad spins in the tent. Are you kidding me? So you're an awesome boy. You're like a ninja. Oh, well, thank you. This is so beautiful. Oh, this conversation between his parents is so sweet. Oh my god, you were all about the boob. I can't believe you turned out to be that. Hilarious though. You still can, but you get pro this weekend. And you can get your laptop back out of the play if you remember all your lines. I don't have any lines. Then you don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to be honest. I feel like Abby's overreacting a bit. She ended up with Nick anyway. And Simon didn't even really try because she didn't outwardly say she didn't like him. I'd be annoyed if like next time just talk to me and tell me what's happening. But the fact that she's like, maybe someone else could do your makeup tomorrow. Really? Bitch, please. Oh no. I hope you freaking meet him at the freaking car <sighs> Because my people probably don't crack with Jan Stevens. I love one of his songs. Oh, I hope it all works out. I'm so nervous for him. Oh my god, so nervous. Oh, he's gonna wear the show. It's killing me this boy. He missed a note. Okay, so he obviously knows his person. I'm probably, probably totally wrong. Some of them I feel like it's Leah, but it's not. I don't know. That would be sad. And she would have told him by now. So I don't know who it is, but obviously it's someone he talks to. Maybe it's that brand guy. Oh my god. I'm so nervous. Alright. Oh, thank god that we made up a dick. No I was like, they can't be mad at each other. Saturday. That's what I thought. You can't. You get a park when you're being blackmailed. Speak you guys are, really go are going to be a really gross um, couple, aren't you? Cleaners and find out when we can come out there. Because our texts do all the areas. So I'll do it all ready now. Oh, yeah. Until the freaking Thursday. It's going to be kind of romantic. Oh, fuck if I do. Thank you very much. Bye. It's cute, Brad. All the soft ties and socket curls. Yep. I like your shirt. He seems nice. Thanks. I say it's Elliot Smith. I know. There's something in his bed. I turned to him slowly and his eyes are wide and bright and surely open. There's his pool, they're still looking at each other and this point. Um, it's you. The I know I'm lying. The reason why I'm oh is because when he installed it for you, did he let you know what the part was? I'm not sure why he probably couldn't offer you this. My heart he can't handle this. the element for you himself. Okay, really good at night. Oh my god, I just want to reread yeah. this right now. It's I'm like shaking, I'm so nervous for it. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, very late afternoon and Saturday, he, he could have done it and we would look into it and <laughs> it was for him it was cream for my birthday you Jesus I'm an idiot 
November, um, you know, within that time frame, I love this we could have um, I was looking for him to be count, and I guess I assume that the boy would be the wife, which kind of makes me want to smack myself. Why it shouldn't be the default and the wrong stretch for the default. It should be even be a default. Um, I'm sorry, that's all right, like, not figuring it out. Oh yeah. my god, this is so right. no drama, that's all. I guess like, I still come out I kind of guess a long time ago, except I thought I was maybe seeing what I wanted to see. Seeing what I wanted to see, I think that means where I wanted it to be. Because I should have shut up about him, my English teacher wouldn't have talked. Oh no, you should have talked the way you write. No freaking way. This is killing me. President. Oh, Abraham. Oh, I can't believe you left the two of me. I must have a bad cue to say your hand is like what's happening, you know? Public, but we got yeah. the parts, so we got the parts for our unit, so it's no problem, and it's really and important, so you're all good there, all right? I just need to write it. Oh, it looks like just read this book, because I already want to reread it, uh, because it's just so cute. What will happen is... It's killing me. It's killing me. Oh, is someone there? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yep. Look, some happiness. Except there's still freaking. Yep, right. Okay. Freaking a lot of pages left. Nothing better go wrong. It just better be cuteness with the rest of the book. There is yeah, right, literally okay. no problem. thirty or so pages. Um, <laughs> when the technician gets there, we'll <laughs> okay, look at me and I just realised I'm sliding out. Oh my God, Simon! Abby hooks onto my shoulders and says, "I didn't realise you and Graham were such good friends." Hush, I say. Freaking Abby never misses a freaking thing. I think we should go to the house without the technician. Don't be difficult at all. Nope. It's okay. Behind the fridge, is it easy for him to get to? They're killing me. Okay. I'm one of the cute guys who gets you tongue tied. His face is a single yogurt. Yep. You're the cute guy. It's just too cute. Are you coming to lunch? Um, where are you? Graham's gone too. How strange. Oh my god. Maybe we should divide and conquer. You got it. We're two bucks. He drives me to the dairy aisle for a pint of milk. So what did you get? Lunch. Tilting his basket inside, there are two plastic containers of miniature auras and a book of plastic spoons. I almost kiss him right there in front of the U.S. scan. He insists on paying for everything. Oh my god. You two are just killing me, so I can't help but be worried that something's going to go wrong though because we still have 30 pages left and I swear in the ad he kisses someone else around Christmas time and it doesn't look like it's freaking... Um, um, it was on the fifth Bram. So it looks like it's like a day. white um, um, blonde hair, unless it's freaking cow. I don't know. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy. But, um, no, I mean, I don't know what you want. I don't know if you're ready to be out. But I say, but he taps along the faces and my palm with his song, and it makes me lose focus. I'm a word if you are. Oh. My boyfriend, my brown eyed grandma had soccer stuff with me. I can't stop smiling. That night at 8.05, Brian and Grandpa is no longer single. And at 8.11, Sam and Spear is no longer single either. What's our next move? Do we keep it classy or do we blast everyone's new speech with kissing selfies? Probably the selfies, he says, but just a couple dozen a day. And we have to shout out our anniversary every week. <laughs> Sunday. A couple dozen posts every night about how much we miss each other. I do miss you though. I mean, Jesus Christ. What a week to be around in. What are you doing right now? Is that an invitation? Yeah. I can't even. Okay, I, I love it.
Talking to you. Talking to you, boyfriend. Yeah, he says I can hear you smiling. Hey, friends. Oh my god, look at my hair. It's ridiculous. It's dying. I'm killing. It's dying. What am I trying to say? It's killing me with all this cuteness. I'm hoping nothing happens in the last 30 pages and that it's all cuteness. Um, I'm loving this so far. I'll have a chat about it when I'm done. But for now, I just got home from work. I'm going to finish the book. Did I get to share all my thoughts? All right, I'm about to lose it. What the heck is going on with you and Bram? I'm, uh, I look at her and a, as a, eh, I look at her and a smile as a wave of heat rises in my cheeks. She waits and I shrug. I don't know why it's so weird talking about this. Oh my gosh, look at you. What I asked, blushing. I'm sorry, but you're so cute. I can't even stand it. Just go, keep walking. <sighs> so cute. Uh, <laughs> Bam and I have English and algebra together, which basically amounts to two hours of staring longingly at his mouth and five hours of longingly imagining his mouth. <sighs> Aha, he says, I fiddle with the latch. This is a door's locked kind of activity. <sighs> so cute! I love them. It's so sweet. Um, oh, and guess who's apparently bisexual? Who? Casanova. Freaking Casanova? For real, according to my dad. You're telling me that your dad told you Casanova was bisexual. <laughs> it was his response to me coming out. Your dad is amazing. <laughs> Ooh, amazingly awkward. Oh. <laughs> I can't handle it. I kind of like this though because you know why? Some books I just end and like it's a happy ending but you want to see all these cute little moments because I've earned it. They deserve happiness and it's just nice to see the little moments together. You know, like some books, like even like Lara Jean or other books that have happy endings and the characters you want to be together are together, but you don't actually get to see them together. Love it. Love it so much. One night of parole in exchange for 10 minutes of access to your Facebook. Jesus Christ. Five. Supervise. You got it. But I want to see the boyfriend. So yeah, at least one of my sisters is about to get murdered. <laughs> Leah, girlfriend, you're the one that's making the separation happen here. You know why? Because you're letting the insecurities get in between the friendships. Like, they're trying to be your friends. They're trying to talk to you now and you're pushing them away. Oh, fuck me up. That's right. Keep speaking this about Nick and we can and we can all just fucking forget that you're obsessed with her too. Are you kidding me? I'm gay. You're platonically obsessed with her. It's cool though. She's a fucking upgrade. What? Female best friend, 4 fucking point oh, now available in the prettiest, perkiest package ever. Oh, for the love of God, I say, you're pretty. All right, seriously, just stop it. I'm so fucking tired of this. She's not an upgrade. You're my best friend. Oh, it's about this again. Then why did you come out to her first? Leah, I say, just whatever. I don't have the right to give a shit. Oh, mate. Mm. Yeah, see, Leah, it's not that he didn't want to tell you. He just wasn't... I guess it was kind of about how you were going to react, but also, as he said, the fact that there was no history there. Yeah. Come on, girl. He told you this before. Or maybe he just told us before. I don't know. Spent six years not asking that question. Oh, no, stop, an asshole. Stop blinking like that, she says. Like what? Don't you dare cry. What? No way. Which is the moment I lose it. Full on puff eyed snort faucet. <laughs> Crying. Oh, I love them. You're a mess, Beer. I know. Accidentally flipped a page, like to chapter 34, and I thought his apology was literally this paragraph. And I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? You gave him a paragraph. And then I realized it was like quite long. So let's start reading. Fucking Marty. No wonder fucking Abby didn't like you, you manipulative little poo. Yeah, good one, Marty. I don't have time for this shit. You should have realized this in before, but no, you're a fucking idiot. This isn't a very great apology, I'm sorry. Aww. It's nice that he ended on a happy note, but I feel like it's lackluster for me. If I got this, I'd be like, fucking Martin. Anyway, word on the street is that you are now deliriously happy and gay love with, a with one Abraham Greenfield, and I want you to know that I'm beyond happy for you. You deserve it completely. You're an awesome dude, spire, spear. I always say spire, but it's spear. And it was cool getting to know you. If I could do it again, I would have blackmailed you into being my friend and left it at that. Mm. Cute. This just kills me. I lean closer to Bram, and because it's so dark, I slide my hand onto his knee. 
I feel him shift quietly as he lays his huge fingers through mine. He lifts them and presses his lips to the edge of my palm. Stop it, you two! You're so cute! Nothing is going to happen in the last ne in the next nine pages. And I'm just so happy because they deserve to be happy together. Okay, bye. I'm so happy for Nick and Abby too. I love that Simon is just watching his friend. Because I'd be the same. I'd be like, oh my god. Um, what is it? I can't help but look at Nick as he watches. He smiles quietly into his fist the entire time. <laughs> oh, they've got a little band. Okay, this makes sense because I saw in the back of this book, it's a excerpt from Leah on the Offbeat, which is about, um, it says... In the sequel to the acclaimed Simon and the Homo sapien agenda follows Simon's BFF Leah as she grapples with changing friendships, first love, and senior year angst. Ooh. But I love that his sister's in it too. And then Bram's like, Bram looks at me and laughs, Simon, your face. Oh, they're killing me. And you're a sweetheart. You look so proud. Yeah, it's weird. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. Oh, I hope they get together in the next book. I hope um, Garrett and Leah get together because he's like, I turn to look at Bram, but he's turned the other direction facing Garrett and I can see from his cheeks that he's grinning and Garrett shakes his head and smiles and says, I don't want to hear it, Greenfield. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh my God, Alice is the best sister. She wanted me to tell you that your parents are about to invite you to some place called The Varsity and you're supposed to say you can't go. And the magic words are that you need to catch up on homework. What? Why? Um, because she's giving you two hours at home unsupervised. Oh, my cheeks are burning, Nick snorts. Yep. So I guess I'll see you guys out there. <laughs> I look at Bram and his eyes are lit with mischief. It's very un like Oh, you're in on this? No, he says, but I stand in support. I mean, it's a little creepy having my sister orchestrate this whole thing. He smiles by his lips, but it's kind of awesome. Oh my god. Kill me. It's so cute. Oh, oh, it's so cute. I love it. Yeah, yeah, she smiles. Which one's yours? Grey zippy sweater next to Nick. I'm lying. I've been stalking him on Facebook. He's adorable. Oh. <laughs>tells me to keep my phone on she, she can text me when they're on the way home and you won't forget the frosties simon i believe this is known as having your cake and eating it too oh it's too public to hold hands this being georgia so i walk next to him oh why can't you hold hands they're just so pure these two i can't handle it um are you warm enough Bro, I'm brim ass, I nod, so I guess we're going to your place. He sounds nervous. It makes me nervous. Is that okay? Yeah, he said, eyes looking to me, and I mean, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh! Oh, my God, it's just killing me. After this whole book, all the emotions, I'm just so happy about this ending. So beautiful. This is, they're killing me, these two. These kids are just fucking killing me. I can't. I can't. Um, when you email me, he says, where are you? Usually here, sometimes at the desk. Huh. Hi, I say. His boss. Hi. Mmm. Oh my god, this book is too much. Too much. <laughs> um, I really didn't want to take you out. If you don't hate all movies, what would you want to see? Anything. But probably a love story, right? Something Simonish with a happy ending. Why does no one ever believe I'm a cynic? I like no endings. I like things that don't end. Exiting the highway. Be ready. Roger that. Thanks, poor V. <laughs> oh, hi. I said, looking up from a worksheet. How was it? Bram came over to study, by the way. And I'm sure you were very productive, my mom says. I press my lips together and Bram quietly coughs. Aww. I love that. <sighs> I can tell from her expression that a conversation is coming. Some kind of awkward discussion about ground rules. Some kind of big deal. But maybe this is a big deal. Maybe it's a holy freaking huge awesome deal. Maybe I want it to be. Oh my god. This is just so good. I can't even. They... I'm so excited for the movie. So excited. This book is just like so real. It doesn't beat around the bush. It talks about everything. Um... 
I don't even know how to begin to express my thoughts. I think, I mean, this is the first book in a while. I'm trying to think, like, apart from Harry Potter, which really isn't the same thing, I don't think I've read a book with a male... I mean, maybe The Raven Boys? I'm just trying to think. I don't read a lot of books with the male lead or solely a male perspective. With Simon, it's very personal and intimate and... I can't even talk in a coherent manner about it. I just love that it not only focused on issues with, with you know, um, the LBGTQI community, it focused on, you know, characters of colour as well. Like, I love that they not only had characters of colour in the book, but, like, that thing I said at the beginning of my vlog when I realised that Abby was black, I, I pictured her blonde with, you know, a white girl with blonde hair, and then I was like, why, is I, why do I automatically default to that? You know, and then they fucking even mention it in the book. Like, Simon has that whole thing with Bram where he, you know, or Blue, where he assumes it's Cal because, you know, he just assumed Blue was white, but he's not. And, like, they even talk about that in the book. And, like, why should white be the default? And why should straight be the default? I just, like, have so many emotions. I think this is the first book in a long time. Like, I was so nervous and emotional throughout this whole book. Like, in this last half of the book today at work, I was, like, actually shaking when he was, like, coming out to his family and coming out to his friends and when he was, um, you know, going to the fair and stuff. Like, this just took me on an emotional roller coaster. We had some sad times. We had some happy times. But it was all so real and cute. And they mentioned Harry Potter. And I just... I really, really want to read more like this. If you have any recommendations like this book... Please let me know. It's definitely going up on my favourites list. It's definitely a new all-time fave. I want to reread it right now. Now that I know who Blue is, I just want to read it again and know, like, it was different. It's just how I felt when I read Queens of Geek. I think I connected with Queens of Geek more in the exact... I connected with Queens of Geek because of the anxiety in there. But I just love Simon as a character. I think if I wasn't... If I had to pick one character I was similar to... I suppose, I guess I lean more towards Abby, but also Simon. I think I'm quite similar to him in my in my personality. Not all the time, um, but, you know, I just... <sighs> I'll try and write a coherent review. Right now, I'm just a bundle of emotions. So well done. So well done. Like, it just did not leave any stone unturned. It didn't feel like it was too much at any time, like... Oh, I'm really wanting to read more diversely and this is a great start. I think I mentioned in the beginning of the vlog and if I did, I'll cut this out now. But, you know, I read things and I watch things and I love when there's, you know, diverse characters, whether it's characters of colour or gay characters. But I never ever notice when they're not there. And I really like that this touched on that too with the whole Draco and Harry fan fiction and other stuff they talk about here. Like, they really just talk about it all in this book. And I just really, I just, again, something I learned reading this book is why, like, why do I default to assume characters are white? That's something I realised, especially reading this book. Because again, like, I don't notice, like, I love when there's characters of colour in a story or in a uh, in a show or something, but I don't really pick up when they're not there. Like, yeah, Harry doesn't have any ca um, gay characters. Stranger Things doesn't have any gay characters. And I never really thought about it. I didn't even think, notice it was, wasn't there. Like, obviously Dumbledore's gay now, but, yeah. Oh, a lot of my favourite books have all got girl characters, and now this is one that's a boy character. I mean, actually, that's a lie. Perks of Being a Wallflower is... From a male perspective, it's a male lead. So maybe I'm underestimating myself. But yeah, I am so glad I read this. I read it really in two days, just spaced out because I had stuff on over the weekend. I think I'm going to definitely reread it before the movie comes out. And now I'm going to immediately go and watch the trailer. Actually, maybe I'll put that in my vlog. I'll watch the trailer. I'll react to the trailer. I'm going to get the trailer up now. I'm really, really excited. I've watched the trailer a few times. One, I went at first saw it and I watched it. And then I've watched a few movies in the cinema, so I watched the trailer when it comes on in the movies. Um, but now, obviously, I don't know what happens. I'm really intrigued to see. Obviously, things change in a movie, so I'm not going to be too concerned. But I just want to see. I looked up who Bram is, like um, who the character they, who's playing him. So cute. 
I'm so excited. Sorry, I'll try and control myself, but I just can't. Love, Simon. Here we go. It looks like there's a few. Ooh. Ooh Do you ever feel weird? Weird? Sometimes I feel like I'm always on the outside. There's this invisible line that I have to cross to really be a part of everything, and I just I can't ever cross it. Me too. My name's Simon. I'm just like you, except I have one huge ass secret. Hey! I like your your boots. I said I like your your boots. Um. Goodbye. Nobody knows I'm gay. <sighs> Sometimes I feel like I'm stuck on a Ferris wheel. One minute I'm on top of the world. Then the next I'm at rock bottom. Looks like in the movie Bram is kissing someone. I can't remember if he kisses someone in the beginning of the book or not. I'm not sure, but I don't know if they added that in, but it's sad. You're thinking about why I haven't come out yet. Maybe part of me wants to hold on to who I've always been. Just a little longer. Announcing who you are to the world is pretty terrifying because what if the world doesn't like you? P.S. It doesn't seem fair that only gay people have to come out. Why is straight the default? I have something I need to tell you. I like girls. You're trying to kill me? I like men. I'm straight. <laughs> I'm heterosexual. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if this is the same trailer, but I'm watching a second one. Oh, my heart. Excuse me. Can you work? Thanks. Thanks. Now's not the time to fail me. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> hey, how was the party? Aces. <laughs> I was wearing a woman's sweater. Mm -hmm. And he's drunk. Yeah, we're good parents. Yeah, we're good. Right? <laughs> my name's Simon. I'm just like you. I have a normal family. Amazing friends. Typical high school. You know there's no texting in the halls, dude. Come on, I can't have all my students tendering it up. Right. That's my department. A lot of my life is great, except I have one huge ass secret. Hey. Have you seen the new post? About the closeted gay kid at school. Who do you think it is? Dear Blue, I'm just like you. Nobody knows I'm gay. Dear Simon, it's nice to know there's another guy at school with the same secret. When did you first realize? Dear Blue, it was a bunch of little things, like my first girlfriend. I think I'm falling in love with you. Be right back. Wasn't my proudest moment. <laughs> Simon, have you told anyone? No, Blue, I haven't told anyone. Announcing who you are to the world is pretty terrifying. Abby's the hottest girl. It's not really my type. Not because she's black. I love black women. I just, I just love all women. Dear Blue, it doesn't seem fair that only gay people have to come out. Why is straight the default? I have something I need to tell you. I'm straight. I like girls. You're trying to kill me. <laughs> I like men. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Sai, look at your computer. Someone leaked your emails on the school blog. I'm sorry, Simon. I can't do this anymore. Whoa. I'm supposed to be the one so that decides when... So, in the news, the emails when... actually get leaked. Oh, that's fucking intense. And who knows and how I get to say it that's supposed to be my thing. I think I'm destined to care so much about one person that nearly kills me. Me too. It's like I can feel you holding your breath. You are still you, Simon. Have you ever been in love? I don't know. I think so. You're blue. I might not know your name or what you look like. Oh. But I want to find you. I'm done living in a world where I don't get to be who I am. Did you date me because you think I look like a guy? No, I actually broke up with you because you don't look like a guy. Oh, okay. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I can't wait to watch it. 
looks obviously a little bit different but still very similar okay so maybe cal is the guy it looks like the guy from um 13 reasons why oh my god what? please share all your thoughts about this book about what your thoughts about the movie let me know i fucking love it send me all the recommendations thanks for watching i don't know how long this will be hopefully not too long bye Hey friends, this is in really bad quality because it's on my laptop. I'm currently editing my Love, Simon vlog. I'm chatting with my friend Steph at Steph Leanne Bookish who just finished Love, Simon and we're talking about it. And I just don't think I could adequately describe yesterday when I finished the book and, and was talking about it, how much I love this book. And I just wanted to add, I just was talking here and I think I got what I wanted to say. I basically like, there's books you read and shows you watch that they have real issues in them and that you love and you relate to. But I think books like Love, Simon, and I've been talking about Queens of Geek a lot because it made me feel the same way. You just love them to the point where you want to cry because they're just so good. And I think it's because they're so real and they're so close to home and they're so relatable. And it's just like, it's not like Harry Potter where there's real issues, but it's in a Harry and it's in fantasy land or it's Stranger Things, where it's yeah in a real world, but like you know, I don't know. It was just this book was all around amazing. I, I'm calling it now. I think it's going to be my top read of this year. I just can't even handle how much this book was amazing. Not only because of Simon, I'm crying. I'm going to cry. Not only because of Simon, but because of everything in this book, like. They don't beat about the, around the bush about representation in terms of race and they don't beat around the bush in terms of fucking bigots and just I can't explain it in a way that's going to be give it enough justice but yeah I just wanted to try and express how much I love this book because yeah I don't as much as you watch this if you got to this point in the vlog you've watched the whole vlog and you know how much I loved it but yeah I think Things like this make me want to cry, not in a sad way, just because it's just so good. And I think this is the type of book, I said it about Queens of Geek. Everyone needs to read this type. Of, everyone needs to read this book. It's so relevant and it's so good. Good job, Becky. Good job. It's just fucking amazing. Oh, God damn you, Becky. God help me if I'm like this. I'm going to be a fucking mess watching this movie. As I said, top rated this year. I don't think anything's going to top this.